Vaishnav Thakur, Jaya Vaishnav Thakur, Vaishnav Thakur, Jaya Vaishnav Thakur.
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय So this morning we're going to continue with our Upadesh Amrita uh, rather than going to Srimad Bhagavatam we'll continue with the Upadesh Amrita and we'll try to cover more so we're on text number two I think most of you know the verse All right Atyahara prayashascha Prajaupo niyamagraha Jana sangas chaloyam cha Shadbir bhaktir vinashyati Atyahara prayashascha Prajaupo niyamagraha Jana sangas chaloyam cha Shadbir bhaktir vinashyati Atyahara prayashascha Prajaupo niyamagraha Jana Sangas Chalo Yamcha Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati Ati Ahara Overeating or too much collecting? Prayasha Over endeavouring Cha and Prajaupa Idle talk Niyama Rules and regulations Agraha Too much attachment to Or Agraha Too, too much neglect of Jana Sangha Association with worldly minded persons. Cha and Lo Yam Ardent longing or greed. Cha and That be by these six Bhakti devotional service. Vin Ashyati is destroyed. Translation One's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. One, eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Two, over endeavouring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessary about mundane subject matters. Four, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement. Or, rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Five, associating with worldly minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And six, being greedy for mundane achievements. 
purport by Srila Prabhupada. Human life is meant for plain living and high thinking. Since all conditioned living beings are under the control of the Lord's third energy, this material world is designed so that one is obliged to work. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has three primary energies or potencies. The first is called Antaranga Shakti or the internal potency. The second is called Tatasta Shakti or the marginal potency. The third is called Bahiranga Shakti or the external potency. The living entities constitute the marginal potency and they are situated between the internal and external potencies. Being subordinate as eternal servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Jivatmas or atomic living entities must remain under the control of either the internal or external potency. When they are under the control of the internal potency, they display their natural constitutional activity, namely constant engagement in the devotional service of the Lord. This is stated in Bhagavad Gita 9.13. Neha, oh, Mahatmanas tumam parta daivim prakritim ashrita bhajanti ananya manaso gyagva bhutadim avyayam. protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasa De Gor Bhattavinda Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the important verse given to us by Sri Swami is describing the six things which we have to avoid in order to cultivate devotional service. We can see this process of bhakti yoga is very scientific. You do this, you get that result. And you do something else, you get a different result. It's all very scientific. We can see, you follow the process, you get the result. And we deviate, we get some other result. So, Srila Prabhupada begins his purport explaining how all living entities have to work. All right? The nature of the soul. Nahi kaschit chamamapi jatu tati akarmakrit. All living entities are forced to act helplessly. No one can be idle, not even for a moment. We may think, oh, I don't have a job, I don't need to work. But still, they will act. They will still eat. They will use. The, they will do so. They will go shopping. 
they'll go to meet their friends, they'll watch their te television, they would call their friends, they'll use their mobile phone, they'll be doing many things. Nobody can be idle, nobody can stop and do nothing for very long. So Srila Prabhupada said, everyone has to work. And then he explains the position of the living entity, how we are the marginal potency of the Lord. Marginal potency, we are between the material and the spiritual. So we have that choice, either to be situated under the spiritual energy or under the material energy. But in both conditions, we are controlled. In both conditions, we are controlled. Under the material energy, we are controlled by the three modes of nature. We are thinking we're free, but we're not free. Nobody's actually free. We're all under the control of the Supreme Lord. And He gives us that independence to choose where we want to be. Do we want to be under the material energy or under the spiritual energy? There is the Antaranga Shakti and the Bahir Anga Shakti. So the Bahir Anga Shakti, the external potency. So it is personified by Mother Durga and she carries a trident. Right? We all know Mother Durga has a trident, just like uh, Lord Shiva also has, Ganesha also has. People in that family, mostly they have the trident, right? Kartikeya, he has a spear. But at least Lord Shiva, Parvati, Ganesh, they have the trident. And that trident represents the miseries of the material world. Adi Baltic, Adi Atmic, Adi Daivic. The miseries which are inflicted on the living entity. Miseries of the body and mind. Miseries of the material nature. And miseries from other living entities. We all know how there are many problems in, the, in our life. We get problems, sometimes neighbors are giving problems, sometimes it's uh, mosquitoes giving problems, sometimes it's dogs or snakes or jackals. <laughs> There's always different living entities there to trouble us just to make our life more difficult. And then the material nature itself is not very comforting. The material nature, sometimes it's very hot, and then next minute it can change, it can be very cold, and there can be rain, and then there can be no rain sometimes. When you want the rain, there's no rain, and when you don't want the rain, then there's so much rain. You get what you don't want. And what you want, you don't get. That's the nature of the material world. And then of course the miseries of our own body and mind. So many troubles with the body. More and more. So we want to understand the choice of the living entity. We can be situated under the Bahiranga Shakti, where you forget Krishna. Krishna Bully Ajeev. Krishna Bully Ajeev, Anadir Bahir Mukha, Itaiva Maya Tara Deha Samsara Dukha. Itaiva Maya Tara Deha Samsara. Forgetting Krishna. We look 
because we looked at the external energy, we turned away from Krishna and instead we looked at the external energy and we forgot Krishna since time immemorial. And in this way, we've been meeting so many difficulties, one after another. So we have to understand the nature of the material world. But then Srila Prabhupada quotes about the, 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 the great souls, the devotees. Now the Mahatmas, they don't accept the Bahiranga Shakti. They turn towards Krishna. So they take the shelter of the Antaranga Shakti, the spiritual energy. So Prabhupada quotes Mahatmanas to Mampar. The Mahatmas are under the protection of the divine energy. But they're also working. They are fully engaged in devotional service. You see, it's not that Mahatmas don't work. The Mahatmas are working like anything. They're fully engaged in devotional service because they know Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Jai Sri Sri Radha Madhava, Gornitai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So both, both sides of the fence, you have to work. Either you work under the service and the control of Maya, or you work under the service and control of Krishna. Prakritim Ashritaha. We're under the protection of the divine energy. And the nature of the spiritual existence is Satchit Ananda. It is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. So, we, we can choose. Do we want the eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss? Or do you want the temporary, full of misery and ignorance? <laughs> we, ha we, 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 we choose. We, we want to be in the material world, so we're under the laws of the material nature and it's a constant struggle for existence. We know the material world, life is not very easy. People have, they have to struggle. Uh, some people have to struggle more than others. Right? We know People who live in the desert or something, you live in the desert, it's a struggle. If you live in Eskimo land, you know, in Eskimo land, it's all snow and ice everywhere. Do you think it's very easy? There's one part of Russia where I go to and uh, they only get a couple of months of summer. The rest of the time it's winter. The climate is very harsh. There's some parts of Russia, they only have, they have six months of daylight and six months of night. So the winter time, you know, six months is just dark. There's no day and no night. It's just darkness, day and night. And they live like and of course, it's, it's also very cold. <laughs> People are living in these conditions. Prabhupada went to England. He was in London and he was interviewed. They asked him, what is it like in hell? And Prabhupada said, oh, this London, it is like hell. He said, every day, rainy, cloudy, cold this is just like hell 
you wash you want to wash your cloth you have to hang it up for a week before it dries true really it's a lot of struggle but people live there somehow they've created you know their they have their own life their own existence there so many people from india have gone there and live there they're thinking very nice <laughs> i don't know why okay then we'll read some more prabhupada explains the word mahatma refers to those who are broad-minded not cripple-minded Cripple-minded persons always engaged in satisfying their senses sometimes spend their activities in order to do good for others through some ism like nationalism, humanitarianism or altruism. They may reject personal sense gratification for the sense gratification of others like the members of their family, community or society either national or international actually all this is extended sense gratification from personal to communal to social this may all be very good from the material point of view, but such activities have no spiritual value. The basis of such activity is sense gratification, either personal or extended. Only when a person gratifies the senses of the Supreme Lord can he be called a Mahatma or broad-minded person? So Srila Prabhupada is making it clear to us that if we're just simply thinking about the family members or other ways of the extended self. First of all, we think of our own self, right? We think about taking care of our own self, me. But then we think about the extended self, and the self extends into different ways. For example, you have a family, so you think about your mother and father, and you think about your brothers and sisters, and you may be married, and you have a wife and your own children, so you think of them also as your loved ones, your very dear ones. And you want to do everything for them, to help them. But Prabhupada said, this is not devotional service. This is just simply sense gratification. It is just, sat, just like you take care of your own body, you take care of the bodies of others who are in relation to your body. And we may extend it even further, not just simply the family, but the community. You know, community, I'm a, maybe I'm a Marwari. So think of our Marwari people, or I'm a Sindhi. We think of the Sindhi people. I have to help the Sindhi people. Right? We think like that in terms of our particular community. That is sense gratification. And then we think on a broader scale, we think of my country. Jai Bharat, right? We are all brothers in India. Sub bye bye. Right? Although we are many different races, communities, but we are all brothers. We are all brothers of Bharat Vars. So, but Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham 
Bija Pradapita. Krishna said, I am the seed giving father. So we are all sons of Krishna. On the spiritual platform, Krishna is the father and we are all, all living entities are brothers or sisters as well, if you like. Right? Not only humans. Some people are very much inclined. They think of the human society. They don't care about the animals. They don't care about the trees or the plants. They only think of the humans. Only humans are important. I was telling you the Christians, they think soul is only in the human. They don't believe there's a soul in the animals or, in, or if there is they say well it's an animal soul different from the humans and in this way they say that's why we're justified to kill them you see it's not our teaching Prabhupada told us he said when we speak to Christian people if they don't accept that meat eating is wrong then don't preach anymore to them there's no point. Don't waste your time. If they cannot admit that meat eating is wrong, then don't discuss any more because it, it won't be of any use. So that's one thing you can remember. If you're out there preaching to people and they talk like that. So we want to understand what is actually for our own sense gratification and what is for Krishna's sense gratification. At the same time, Prabhupada also tells us, a devotee is not neglectful. Not neglectful. In other words, we have some responsibilities. We have to take care of them. Just like sometimes devotees young men want to become devotee but they have some responsibility maybe they borrowed money for their studies you know to go to college or something yeah it costs money and you take a loan you borrow maybe you borrowed from the bank or you borrowed from your parents or your brother or something and so you owe you have some debts so maybe before you can become a devotee you have to pay off your debts. You have to take care of these debts. So that's responsibility. Devotee is not neglectful. If you're a married person and you have a wife and children, you have to take care. You have to provide for them. So it may mean you have to have a job. You have to go to work. Devotee cannot be neglectful. Today is the disappearance day of who? Gopal Bhatta. Yes? So Gopal Bhatta, he was from Trivandrum, right? Sri Rangam. And his father was one of the priests in the Sri Rangam temple. But Lord Chaitanya had gone there and Lord Chaitanya had met this Balababhata, who was the, one of the priests, and he invited Lord Chaitanya, come and stay at my home, because now is Chaturmasya. Just like, not, has Chaturmasya begun yet? Yes, it's begun, right? Now we're in the first month. No green leaves, right? No sock for one month. So Chaturmasya had come, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at Sri Rangam. So Balaba Bhatta said, oh, this Bhatta, the, who was a priest in the Rangam temple, he told Lord Chaitanya, please stay with us for Chaturmasya. And then every day you can tell us the glories of Lord Krishna. So he invited Lord Chaitanya to stay at his place. So Lord Chaitanya was there for four months. And that way, he gave association to Gopal, Gopal Bhatta. He got the association of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he became attached. Not only Gopal Bhatta, Prabodhananda also 
who was the uncle of Gopal Bhatta, Prabodhananda Sarasati, he also was from there. And he also joined Lord Chaitanya. So they both went to Vrindavan to become devotees. But there was another, there was Raghunath Bhatta. Now Raghunath Bhatta, he was the son of Tapana Mishra. So Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, you stay with your mother and father till they leave the body. And after they leave the body, then you come to Vrindavan. And this way Raghunath Bhatta, he came to Vrindavan. First he waited for father, mother to leave the body, then he went to Vrindavan, became full-time devotee. So like that, sometimes devotee, you have some responsibility, you cannot neglect it. But if you're lucky, you have no responsibilities. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you're not too entangled with the social situation, sometimes people get very entangled. So many attachments. So, best, the most fortunate person, they are ones who are able to take shelter of Krishna. They are the Mahatmas. Prabhupada called the devotees Mahatmas. You are all Mahatmas because you have engaged yourself fully in the service of Krishna. Mahatma said, Prabhupada said, broad minded, not cripple minded. Broad minded, I mean, we think about everyone, everything. We're not just thinking of our own little existence, my family, my home, like that. Right? So, Mahatmas, they may be in family life, they may be married with children, but they are broad-minded Mahatmas. It doesn't necessarily mean to be a Mahatma, you have to be a sannyasi or a brahmachari, they could be in any ashram. But we have to be devoted to Krishna, to take shelter. Srila Prabhupada continues, in the above quoted verse from Bhagavad Gita, the words daivim prakritim refer to the control of the internal potency or pleasure potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The pleasure potency is manifested as Srimati Radharani or her expansion, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. When the individual jiva souls are under the control of the internal energy. Their only engagement is the satisfaction of Krishna or Vishnu. This is the position of a Mahatma. If one is not a Mahatma, he is a Duratma or a cripple-minded person. Such mentally cripple-minded Duratmas are put under the control of the Lord's external potency, Maha Maya. So Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us personification of the Lord's internal potency, Srimati Radharani, the Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency of the Lord. Prabhupada wrote in the preface of the Krishna book about the lady who stands beside Krishna. Hmm. Sometimes people wonder, who is this lady with Krishna? Because people have heard about Krishna, but they, not everyone has heard of Srimati Radharani. So Prabhupada in the preface, he said, people ask, who is this woman? with Krishna. 
Prabhupada didn't talk about who she was. He asked the question, but he didn't answer it. He talked about who Krishna is. People want to understand who is Krishna. But even before they can understand who is Krishna, first they have to understand who are we. If we don't understand who I am or who you are, if we don't understand who we are, we will never understand who is Krishna. That will be difficult. It's difficult enough as it is. Even though we know we are spirit souls, we know we're not the body, but to understand who is Krishna, that is not easy thing. And to understand who is Srimati Radharani, that is more difficult. It was only from the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that the worship of Radha and Krishna became prominent. Before the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, most temples just simply worshipped Krishna. They only had Krishna deity. Just like if you go to Navadvip Parikrama, one place we go to is Bail Pakur. How many, have any of you been on Navadvip Parikrama? No? You've never been on Navadvip Parikram? Oh, wow. You're missing so much. You have to come on the Parikrama sometime. We'll take you to visit all the places associated with the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. So one of the places we go on Parikrama is Bail Pakur. You know Bail? The Bail fruit? Do you get that here? Yes? You know it's hard, right? If it falls on the bald head, you get a sore head, right? The bald men don't like to walk under the bail tree because the bail fruit may fall off on their head and they'll get a real bump. So, Bail Pakur, there's a temple of Madangopal and that the, the deity of Madango Pau was worshipped by Nilambar Chakravarti. Do you know who is Nilambar Chakravarti? Hmm? Maternal? The, the father of Sachimata. Sachimata's father, uh, Nilambar Chakravarti. He was a great astrologer. And, Sachimata, when she was pregnant, she did not deliver the child for 14 months. 14 months, huh? could you imagine? It's a long time to carry a baby in the womb. But Nalambar Chakravarti, he looked at the chart and he saw the positions of all the stars. And he said, oh, the child is waiting for the auspicious constellation because there was a very auspicious period coming on the day of Holi. And so it was at that time that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. So Nilambar Chakravarti Thakur, he understood that. Anyway, the deity of Madango Pal is there. It's only Krishna. There's no Radha. There's only Krishna. Because before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was no worship of Radha. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who introduced people to the worship that Radha is the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Of course, there was also the other Sampradaya. There's uh, the uh, Nimbarka Sampradaya. Nimbarka. The Nimb Nimbadijas, they're also connected with Bail Pakur. It was in Bail Pakur, the Nimbadichas were there. And one of the Nimbadichas, uh, Nimbarka, he was told that you go in there, go in the forest, the four Kumaras are in there, and they will give you transcendental knowledge. 
So Nimbarka went in there and he met the four Kumaras and the four Kum So in Nimbarka Sampradaya, they also have Radha and Krishna. They also worship Radha and Krishna and they recognize also the position of the gopis. So that's Nimbarka Sampradaya. But Sri Vaishnavas, no, you don't see that. And Vishnu Swami, the Pushti Marg, no, you only see Krishna, right? You won't see Radha there, you just see Krishna. And Madhvacharya, Udupi Krishna, there's no Radha. Udupi Krishna. So it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who actually taught the world the position of Srimati Radharani. And then Prabhupada explained her expansion is there in the form of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. She's an expansion. The goddesses of fortune are all expansions coming from Srimati Radharani. So they're meant they're all pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. They're there for his in, for his pleasure. Lord Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He likes to enjoy unlimitedly. And he enjoys with his eternal consort, Srimati Radharani. And it is said, the enjoyment which Radharani gets is even greater than Krishna. That although Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, he sees that this woman, this, his consort, Srimati Radharani, is getting many, many more times pleasure than he's getting. Because she is enjoying how much Krishna loves her. And she's enjoying the beauty of Krishna. And she's enjoying her loving affair with Krishna. And that is why Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he wants to enjoy like her. Right? He's the supreme enjoyer. But she's enjoying more than me. Therefore, Chait therefore Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And has he, when he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes with Radha Bhav, with the mood of Srimati Radharani because he wants to enjoy, he wants that pleasure. The nature of the soul is we want to enjoy. We say Anandamaya Bayasat. The nature of the soul is to find pleasure. We're all looking for pleasure. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. We are tiny parts of Krishna. Our enjoyment comes in service to Krishna. We are not the Purusha. We are the Prakriti. Krishna Prakriti. We are meant for his enjoyment. Our position is feminine in relation to Krishna. Just like in the married life, the wife is meant for the enjoyment of the husband. The husband enjoys the wife. In the same way, we are feminine in relation to Krishna. We are meant to give pleasure to Krishna. So one time there was a discussion in Jagannath Puri. Balababata had come there. Balababata, you know Balabacharya? Balabacharya, he'd come there to Jagannath Puri. And he was, you know, he's a, he's a great scholar and he's a great devotee. And so one day he raised a doubt. He said that, that he said that we are all feminine in relation to Krishna. Krishna is the male and we are all the, he's the Purusha and we are the Prakriti. So he said, in the Vedic culture, the wife 
never chants the name of her husband, right? You never say your husband's name, right? You just say, my Prabhu, or my husband, or you may say to the, your children, your father. You won't call him by name. In the same way, Mother Sita never uttered the name of Lord Ram, right? Mother Sita never uttered the name of Lord Ram. So Balabacharya said, we are all feminine in relation to Lord Krishna, but we are chanting his name. You're all chanting his name. So is it proper or not? So the devotees were, you know, <laughs> they, they had this question, a, a little bit of a challenging question. And so they told Balabacharya, just wait, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming. He is the personification of all religious principles and he will answer your doubt. So when Lord Chaitanya came, they asked Lord Chaitanya, about this. And Lord Chaitanya explained, he said, it is the duty of a wife to follow the order of her husband. Right? It's the duty of the wife to follow the order of her husband. They say, our, fa our fa husband, Lord Krishna is the husband, we are like the wife, we follow the order. Lord Krishna has ordered we should chant his name. Everyone should chant the name of the Lord. So we're simply following the order. This is the, the principle. Lord Krishna told us, chant the name. So we're chanting. It's his order. Like that we understand. All right. Uh, uh, Prabhupada continues. Indeed, all living entities within the material world are under the control of Mahamaya, whose business is to subject them to the influence of threefold miseries Adi Daivik, Adi Atmik, Adi Bhautik sufferings. Adi Daivik sufferings caused by the demigods, such as drought, earthquakes, and storms. Adibotic klesha, suffering caused by other living entities like insects or enemies. And adiatmic klesha, sufferings caused by one's own body and mind such as mental and physical infirmities. Daiva but atma hetavaha, the conditioned souls subjected to these three miseries by the control of the external energy suffer various difficulties. So we spoke about that, that material, we're, we're under the ma material energy. There will be problems. It's all suffering, all difficult. Of course, we are trying to enjoy. And nobody admits I'm suffering. One time, this one devotee, his mother came to see Prabhupada. And she came to see Prabhupada and she said, you know, it was New York, and it was the summertime. It was very hot in New York in the summertime, you know. No air. It's all big buildings, you know, and it was very stuffy. And she came in out off the streets of New York into Prabhupada's room, and she said, Oh, oh, it's so hot. Oh, I'm suffering out there. It's so terrible. So Prabhupada began to speak. Yes. Material life is miserable, all suffering. And then she said, no, no, I don't think it's so bad. <laughs> and Prophet, just a minute ago, you were telling me how you're suffering. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, people don't like to admit 
they're suffering. And you talk to them about how you're suffering. Oh, no, it's not so bad. You know, we get our holidays. <laughs> we get the weekend off. Maybe. <laughs> Nowadays, people don't even get the weekend off. They're all working on the weekends also. All suffering. You know, think, well, the summer's coming. So we'll enjoy in the summer. And the summer comes and it's more suffering. We suffer in the winter, we suffer in the summer. It's all suffering from beginning. But little bit of pleasure, we think, how oh, I'm enjoying. There's a story, the man was in the forest, he got chased by a tiger. He went running, 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 and he fell in a well. He didn't see where he was going, he fell into a well. But when he was falling down the well, somehow he grabbed onto this creeper which was growing out the side of the well. And he was holding on the creeper. And the tiger was up top. And he looked in the bottom of the well. And the well was dry. But there was poison snakes in the bottom of the well. And he's holding the creeper. He's holding this creeper. But he sees there's a rat. The rat is eating the creeper. It's going to break the creeper. Then a little bee came by. A little bee came by and it was carrying some pollen. And the honey fell off the, 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 the bee and it fell onto the man's face. It rolled down his face onto his tongue. And he tasted the honey and he thought, oh, so nice. He's suffering so much. The tiger's on top waiting to eat him. Poison snakes are in the bottom of the well. And the rat is eating. And he's, he's in the most terrible position. And a little honey comes on his tongue. And he's thinking, ah, oh, happiness, enjoyment. This is the material world. Working very hard. A little, little drops of happiness. The illusion of happiness. We do not know what is real happiness. So we have to understand how miserable this material world is. The main problem confronting the conditioned soul is the repetition of birth, old age, disease, and death. In the material world, one has to work for the maintenance of the body and soul. But how can one perform such work in a way that is favorable for the execution of Krishna consciousness? Everyone requires possessions such as food grains, clothing, money, and other things necessary for the maintenance of the body. But one should not collect more than necessary for his actual basic needs. If this natural principle is followed, there will be no difficulty in maintaining the body. All right, Prabhupada's writing about this atyahara, overeating or over collecting, collecting more things than required. You know, now because of economic development, people are a little more wealthier here in India. And we see what's happening. We see the problems everywhere, plastic bags, everywhere so many things are thrown away, rejected. Things like mobile phones. How long does your mobile phone last before you have to get a new one? One or two years. Every one or two years, you get a new mobile phone. What's the population of India? How many people? How many mobile phones in India? 
Just imagine how many mobile phones every day are thrown away. And even what to speak of thrown away, people lose them. They lose them. They carry them with them. They put them down. Oh, where did I put my phone? Oh, I lost it. In the London underground, every day they find so many mobile phones. In the airports, they find every day so many things. People leave them there. Their mobile phones. I, it happened to me, I didn't lose a mobile phone, but I have this pot. It's like a, it's a hot pot. We call it in China, we call it bao wen bei. It, bao wen bei, it means insulated pot to keep things hot. So I like to take hot water with me to drink when I'm traveling because sometimes, you know, airports are really cold. And it's nice to have hot water, so I have this pot to keep water hot in it. But somehow I was in the airport, I lost it. Oh, I lost my pot, you know. So I, 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 I went back to that airport and I, I asked them, I said, did you find my pot anywhere? And they said, oh, we have a, we have a place where everything is stored, everything which is left in the airport. He said, you go down there, you'll see there's a room there, all the things which have been left in the airport. I went down, the place was like full of all these pots and you know, just so many things, hundreds of them. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I couldn't imagine. There were just so many. And I thought I was the only one to lose. But I went, I saw so many. And every day, it's the same. Mobile phones. People lose their mobile phones. And people find it. They, they, it this, is, this is the consumer society. People have so many things. I went, I was in Dubai. I went, oh, well, first of all, there's one devotee from Dubai. He went to Dubai, had a little bag, suitcase, when he first went to Dubai. About 20 years later, he came back from Dubai. He'd already married with children. Came back from Dubai, he had two containers. <laughs> You go there with a little bag <laughs> and you come back with two containers. <laughs> it's true. This is a consumer society. We're, we collect, we accumulate so much, so many things. Another devotee was telling me, another devotee has, he lost his parents. Mother died, and then a little while later, father died. He went back to the house, and the house was like full. So many, so many things, you know. So many deities, different gods and goddesses. There was just, it was unbelievable. He just, he couldn't get rid of it. What to, who to give it to, how to get rid of it. <laughs> and they were valuable things. They were not cheap things, they were all quite expensive. People have this tendency, they just accumulate, they buy. The airport is, even in the airport, they have these shops. People want to, they'll get people to come and buy, spend their money. Another time, I, was, I went to this person's house and somehow I walked into the room I thought I was in a shoe shop. There were so many pairs of shoes. I thought I was in a shoe shop. There must have been about 20 pairs of shoes or something. It was unbelievable. Another time, one devotee was getting married and brought me to the house and he said, my wife already put her clothes in there. The whole wardrobe was full. So many saris and so many Punjabi dresses and all this. Prabhupada said, the average woman will not be satisfied unless she has 30 saris. Right? See, she confirmed. She said yes. 
That's women. For a woman, they have to have that. Men, well, two dories. <laughs> a little different. Men are a pair of jeans. <laughs> it's a different. But still, men have their own problems. They accumulate many things. They do also accumulate. So we have to be very careful. Don't collect more than necessary. Right? Ishopanishad said, Isyavashya midam sarvam yatkincha jagatya tena chaktena bunjadaha magridaha kashasvid. Just take your quota. Don't take more knowing well to whom it belongs. Right? This is important. We take more, it's not our quota. Now, what is the quota for one person will be different for another. Just like maybe if you're a, a businessman. You now somebody's doing business, they have a company or something like that. He's got to dress, you know, he's got to dress for his job. In meeting, comp meeting customers, meeting clients, he has to look the part, you know. If he comes along in his old jeans and t-shirt and they think, well, you're the owner, you know. They won't be very impressed. They have to dress for their job, for their position. And sim similarly, devotees. Brahmanas, we also dress for our work. We wear do dhoti, kurta. You know, if we come along in, you know, <laughs> in different, if we, if we come along in jeans and t-shirt, oh, I'm not a devotee today, I'm only a devotee when I go to temple. <laughs> People wonder what's wrong. So, we try to Control. Don't over -clack. Sometimes we devotees, we have so many books, more books than we've even opened. You go to sometimes you go to somebody's home, home and they have a set of Bhagavatams, and oh, I just wanted to check something in the Bhagavatam, and you take the volume of the Bhagavatam out, and it's still got the plastic on it. Nobody even opened it. It's still wrapped in the cellophane. That's common. They get the books, they put them there on the bookcase, it looks nice. Never open it. Not very good. We should read. And we get so many books. Somebody just gave me just the other day, I got the Prabhupada in South India, or history of our movement in South India. <laughs> Quite a big book to read. It's a lot. There's so many books coming out all the time. It's difficult to read all of them. I like to read Prabhupada's books again and again and again. But other things, it's also, sometimes it's also nice to read other things. Especially when the devotees write about Prabhupada. You want to read about Prabhupada, how Prabhupada interacted with the devotees. So we like to read these books, it's nice. But, again, we collect so many things, collecting. And then people give you, as a sannyasi, some people often give you things. They give you things. Hanuman Prasak Swami was telling a nice story. He went to Rathi Atra up in Ludhiana. They have this Rathiyatra up in Ludhiana every year. So it was, it was a little cold that day, and he was out there on Harinam and the parade, and one shopkeeper came by and gave him a chadar. So he thought, oh, very nice. He didn't want the chadar, he gave it to another devotee. Little further down the street, another man came out and gave him a chadar. <laughs> And in the course of the, in the course of the Rathiyatra, he got about five chadars donated to him. And each one, he'd give them to different devotees, you know. So you, you have to do like that, you know. 
because she clanked. We can clank so much. We just clank more than we actually need. You have to constantly review. What do I need? You know, maybe ladies also, you have to do like that with your children. You know, sometimes, sometimes people, they collect and they'll collect for years and they'll never throw anything away. I went to one person's home and they had prasadam from like two years ago in the fridge. <laughs> They just keep it, you know. No, it's prasadam. <laughs> it's two years old. You've had it for two years. <laughs> no, it's prasadam. <laughs> Can't throw it away. We just, we have this problem. And if you, if you look at how much waste is there, refrigerators, you know, people nowadays, they have these refrigerators and televisions, and now motor cars, and they become scrap quickly. They don't last very long. Especially if you're up there in Mayapur, and you go to Calcutta, drive the car, your car won't last more than one or two years maximum. The roads are so terrible. So what do they do with all the scrap, all the accumulation? The motor cars, the computers, the mobile phones, battery cells. Battery cells are a big problem for the environment. And we often use battery cells. You know, you get these little cells to put in your maybe torchlight or something. But these ba battery cells are very harmful for the environment. They give off a lot of t poison. So you have to be very careful what you do with your battery cells. Otherwise you cause a lot of harm to the planet. But every day there's so many battery cells are just thrown away. The waste which we have is unbelievable. If you go to a place like Hong Kong, Hong Kong, you've got like 8 million people or so in a small space. And they're all consuming. And they're consuming fast. Clothes, electronics, furniture, all of these things. Constantly waste throw out, get new one, throw out, get new one, going on. All. And this is, this is a problem for us as devotees. We have to be very careful. Don't collect more than this. And collecting, it could be also collecting more funds than required. Of course, we... This is not a problem for devotees. We never have that problem. We're quite expert in spending the money, right? We can spend just like they built this big temple. The man, the gentleman who built it, obviously felt he had, didn't want to collect more money, so he used money for building this nice temple. That was very good. I was over at Abbott's, at Abbott's also, they did a major renovation. One man came there and he wanted, he thought, I want to make this temple more grand. And he did a wonderful job. They put marble along the front of the altars. And, because I'd been there in the beginning, I was there in 1978, and it was very, very basic. We didn't even have a door on the temple. There was no door. I used to sleep in front of the door in case people came in the night. But, but now they put marble everywhere and, you know, the man, the one man wanted to make the temple very grand and he spent money, he spent quite a bit of money to put mar nice marble around and decorate everything very, very nicely. So that's good use of money. 
when you use it for the service of Krishna, to glorify Krishna, to build a nice temple for Krishna. We don't want to just accumulate money, we do want to use it for Krishna, but use it carefully. Right? That's why we have our accountants here to check on these things, right? Now, to make sure that the money is not being uh, wasted. Everything should be used properly. Prabhupada was very strict with us. If we went out of the room and left the fan on and nobody's in the room, Prabhupada would be very upset. If we left the light on, nobody's in the room, Prabhupada would get upset with us. If we wasted prasadam, Prabhupada would get upset. Prabhupada was very cautious, he was very frugal and very careful, but at the same time he would spend for Krishna. He wanted to spend to print books. That's that was good. Use people gave Prabhupada money, he would say, put it in my book fund it would go for the printing of books so that he could print more books and then he used some money also to build the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan and the Radharasa Bihari temple in Juhu and to buy the land in Mayapur and put up the first building the lotus building so like that Prabhupada would use money for these kind of projects. But Prabhupada was, would get very upset if we wasted money. One time, he came, I think it was Los Angeles Temple, and he came and he said, ah, oh, he said, you've changed everything. He said, the last time I came here, you just redone the temple. He said, again, you've redone it. He said, this is your American disease. He said, you build something, then you knock it down, and then build something else. Prabhupada didn't like that. He said, this is the American disease. You have to be very careful. You, know? you, just, you build something, and then next year you knock it all down and build it up again. <laughs> okay. You can't do like that. It's not very good. That is not proper use of Krishna's money. We have to be careful. So we have this responsibility to serve Krishna and to use everything provided by Krishna, to use it very carefully, to use it very nicely. It's a very big responsibility. Don't waste. Prabhupada did not mind us, you know, nice prasadam, distribute prasadam, very good, yes. People are coming to the temple and they get nice prasadam. That's very good. And Prabhupada also liked to see nice flowers on the altar, decoration for the deities. We would decorate with different flowers and so on. That's all right. The, the, Offering to Krishna, using flowers, decorating the altar, making it beautiful, that's very nice. That is proper use of wealth. But if Prabhupada saw the flowers are all dead, <laughs> he would get upset. If he said, these are old flowers, they're all withered, they're all wilted. And Prabhupada said, because you have no bhava, you're doing like this. Some pla in some places it's difficult to get flowers. You know, here in India you're very lucky. If you have to go to Japan, one flower costs so much. So expensive. One flower costs a lot of money. When I joined the movement, we had no money and the temple was very poor. When we did Guru Puja, we didn't get one flower, we got one petal. Everybody got one petal to offer to Prabhupada. Now, you're very, here in India we get flowers, they grow everywhere, you can collect, not so costly, 
and we, everyone can offer a whole flower or even a handful of flowers. And when I do RT, I see all the flowers they put on the dish. Usually we would, in England, you know, because flowers are really costly there, you just have one flower. <laughs> you do RT, one flower. You don't have a dish full of flowers, you just have one flower. In Japan, Japan maybe they only offer petals at a time. <laughs> because it's so expensive, everything, so costly. So it's different in different places. Okay, any questions? You shouldn't. But th this is an, an important point, adyahara. Don't collect more than necessary. Don't over collect. Keep it simple. Right? Kavi Chandraswami, he, he speaks about the KISS principle. You know the KISS principle? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. K-I-S-S, -S, right? <laughs> so that's how we want to live. Simple living, high thinking. And it makes our devotional service very easy for us. If we keep it simple. All right, any question? We'll continue this afternoon. Okay. Sri Upadesha Amrita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gaur Premanande.